good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful and grateful that the Lord has blessed us to get this close to another Christmas celebration and to that he has brought us thus safe. He brought us safe thus far. We need to make note of this. Uh, uh, next Wednesday, we won't have Bible study. And we'll take uh, that Wednesday off coming up to the new year. I uh, have uh, we are certainly thankful and grateful to you all who are here with us and who have been faithful with us now all year long and we hope to see everybody back in 2024. Now let us begin with an old familiar song, I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, He and Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Jesus, all of my trouble, He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask Him, He will deliver. Make all my troubles quickly and in. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I Need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, He all my cares and sorrow will share. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful that you've given us another opportunity to call upon thy throne of mercy. We come at this hour, O oh God, thanking you 
that things are as well as they are. We realize that there are so many in this world that are worse off than we are. But yet you have seen fit to look beyond our faults and supply our every need. For that we say thank you, sir. We thank you, O oh God, for last night's laying down, and we thank you for this morning's early rising. We ask you, O oh God, to continue to bless us, continue to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we ask you, O oh God, to look on those that are within the congregation, those that are members of Pilgrim Rest, and those that are members of churches standing open in your name. Bless those that are sick among us. Heal their bodies. Bless those that are bereaved among us. Lift up their heavy burden. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus. Look on our country. Our country is in turmoil. But only you can bring peace where there is confusion. Do it right now, dear Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then, O oh God, look all over the world and bring peace to all mankind. In this season of giving, in this season of loving, in this season of celebrating the birth of the Savior, we ask that you give us more love for one another and help us be better servants unto thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Tonight we are going to try to conclude our lesson on how God uses our pain. I know sometimes uh, we think that pain is punishment. A pain is not always punishment. Sometimes pain is used to help us be what God wants us to be. Now, at the conclusion or the close of last week's lesson, we were discussing how that Elihu was making and giving his speech and he was saying to us that God speaks to us and he speaks to us in three primary ways. One, he speaks to us in dreams. Dreams and visions. And that's the primary way that God communicated with mankind during the Old Testament, through dreams and visions. According to Elohu, the second way that God speaks to us is through our pain. The Oxford professor and scholar C.S. Lewis wrote, God whispers to us in our pleasure but he shouts in our pain. God doesn't cause the pain, but he does use the pain. James writes that the test of our faith produces patience. And he says to us in James 1 and verse number 4, Endure until your testing is over. Then you will mature and complete and you won't need anything. For then you'll be ready to serve God. Then tonight we pick up the narrative where he talks about, first off, and what this means to us that James was talking about, that God does not use our pain to make us sinless, but to make us spiritually mature and completely equipped 
to live for him. Sad to say, there are many in God's house that are not spiritually mature. You have not gone through enough pain so that you know how to treat your fellow brothers and sisters. Yet it seems like the more pain God sends you through, instead of you learning the lesson, you continue down that wrong path. God does not intend for us to be sinless. But he does expect us to mature to the point where we sin less than we did before. Thirdly, Elohim says, God speaks through a messenger to tell a person what is right and to voice vouch for personal uprightness. The word messenger can refer to either a heavenly being, probably in this instance, a human being. In this text, it seems Elihu, Elihu is referring to himself as God's messenger, rather than speaking to Job harshly as the three friends had done. He will be gracious to him and deliver from and deliver him from the pit because he has found a ransom. The ransom probably refers to a sick person repentance. Therefore, if Job will repent, Elihu says this will be the results. If you read Job 33 and 25, then their flesh will become softer than a child's. They will go back to the days of their youth. Now, don't take that literally. I don't care once you reach a certain age, you're not going back to the days of your youth. And I don't want to go back to the days of my youth because I was... Uh, too dumb about too many of life's things in my youth. And I guess uh, ignorance in that sense is bliss because if you don't know a lot of stuff, you won't form certain opinion about other people. But Job 33 and 30, 25 says, says it's telling us he shall be born again and become a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Born again. We don't talk about that enough in the modern church. Being born again. I can hear some of them old deacons talking about regenerated and born again. Anybody that was around New Mount Zion, you could hear uh, Deacon Eddie Morris talking about that all the time. Regenerated and born again. Born again. A change of mind. Born again. A new way of thinking. Born again. A new outlook on life. God speaks to us in many different ways. But when other options fail to get our full attention, he sometimes chooses to speak through our suffering. Elihu closes his section of his speech by